This is Jay Michaels and we're in the Passion Pit and we're still in doors. Now you're probably as bummed out as I am because we have Hanukkah coming up, we have Christmas coming up, we have New Year's coming up, but where are we going? What are we doing? The pandemic is at its height. So we can't simply say, ah, the hell with it. I'll wear my mask down here like a, like a fashionable scarf and go out. We can't do it. But that doesn't stop artists. I, I am reminded of uh, the end of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And even though the Grinch stole everything from the Who's, Christmas still came. Mm -hmm. and, and we have the same thing here. Maybe COVID-19 has stolen a lot of the fun, but thanks to some really amazing artists and not stealing all the fun. There are musicals coming out now that are celebrating the holidays that are being workshopped right now and shown in parts, uh, in workshop, in pieces in 2020 to make sure that 2021, we can celebrate the style. And, and there are two brilliant composers here with me right now, uh, Billy Reese and Drew Larrymore. And they're gonna talk about their really clever Christmas musical that's happening, are you ready? Tomorrow night. Gents, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. All right, please. I'm I'm frustrated. Uh, uh, my birthday went, came and went, and and I couldn't go out and partying. So now we're up <laughs> to the holidays. Give me something to celebrate. What do you got? <laughs> well, we have a uh, 28, 29 minute uh, presentation of a new musical that Billy and I have written called The Bestest Office Christmas Party Ever. <laughs> and uh, it is a parody of, you know, office Christmas culture gone awry. And um, we're presenting it tomorrow night, actually, digitally uh, with the New York Theater Barn um, in their new work series. The entire workshop, all, all 28 minutes of it. Tomorrow. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's an edited video and uh, we'll be uh, it's like a live rewatch, I guess. So. I, I, I gotta tell you, I laughed hard when I saw the name of it, just the name <laughs> alone did it, because I, I remember, oh my God, how many Christmas parties have I gone to in, in my corporate days? Mm. And, and immediately they all came flushing back. What's, <laughs> what's, what's the plot? What's the story? What's it about? Yeah, well, it's about a sad group of office coworkers who are anxiously awaiting for their boss. Uh, they're dressed as elves. Uh, their boss prefers them to be dressed as elves and uh, he, he is Santa. And they're waiting for their bonus. And uh, the boss arrives, but the bonus is, is not there to be found. And there is a, um, uh, a mix up in terms of plans and it sets them all spiraling. So uh, they all sort of go into existential crises throughout the course of the show and figure out how they're going to uh, to you know take a look at the new year maybe a little bit different way. Mm. It's a really fun exciting musical comedy um, you know uh, the score is just some of the most fun that I've had uh, writing because every song there are sort of the the seedlings of you know your uh, your classic Christmas songs there's a lot of little easter eggs throughout this thing and you know if if you've ever celebrated a, a holiday around, you know, December, you will get almost every single reference. Um, that's, it's, it's super fun. That's great. Uh, uh, I got to tell you, from Drew, I'm hearing it's an existential crisis. The money is not there. The boss arrives without the money. And then, Billy, I hear, I hear you say it's a happy, fun musical that's going on. Um, uh, I, how, how is it funny? Because Drew, you, you, you make it sound like it's a, a sad piece. So well, tell me about it. Funny. What's what's funny? What's what's interesting about it? Yeah, I always sort of bring it downtown when I'm when I'm talking about these things. But wow, uh, man, it became waiting for a go with trees. Oh well, my god. It's funny, sad, right? Which I think is the most relatable. And uh, so they are really, they're a sad bunch of people. They work actually at an adult incontinence pad, padding company. So the, uh, their day job in and of itself is pretty absurd. And um, what actually really happens is the, the boss comes in and, and is offering one of them a ticket out uh, to an exotic island. And so they're all vying for the spot to go. So, um, so it's very funny in that, you know, I think the holidays are really funny. I think the holidays are, are a mix of, of emotions. I love it on the one hand and hate them on the other. I'm really happy some moments. I'm sort of devastated other moments. I, I, I've never really been able to get a handle on the overwhelming emotions around the holidays. So I think you see all of that in this and hopefully it is very funny. 
uh, and a little raunchy. So, I mean, it is Good. Billy, so, you know, it is, it, it's pretty raunchy in some moments. Okay, uh, uh, Billy, you've just been, uh, you've just been associated with raunchy. <laughs> and, and I think that is a correct association. Um, it's, okay. it's not a musical you want to bring the kids to. I love it already. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so we're being realistic, and, and I think an adult incontinence pad organization, I think that's really great. I can see the shit references flying everywhere uh, within this. Um, that and more. <laughs> uh, Billy, did you write the score? Yeah, I wrote the music and lyrics and drew it uh, book and lyrics. Okay, that explains how we have, on one side, we have Eugene O'Neill meets Dr. Seuss. Okay, got sure. it. <laughs> uh, so tell, tell me about this score. What's funny, what's interesting, and what's raunchy? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I mean, I think the score uh, captures in um, a really exciting way the sort of dichotomy between um, the... Uh, the joy, this mass manufactured joy of the holidays and the desperation of the holidays, you know? Um, so you have these upbeat, you know, um, fun, just sort of bops of melodies paired with sort of the most wild, depressing lyrics. Um, and I think that is where the comedy sort of comes in is that these are, you know, people who are just sort of so severely um, looking for something and just not happy with where they are, but paired uh, and, and, and sung to um, the kind of songs that they would be listening to the radio on the radio uh, twenty four seven during the season. I'm I'm getting a Monty Python vibe here. Absolutely, we're, we're, yeah. we are. We're, you know, I'm hearing always look on the bright side of life. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay, well, um, uh, is this the first musical you two have done together? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting to work on a second stage and pitching this as a second stage Christmas show, you know, an alternative to Christmas Carol and the Nutcracker and the more commercial offerings that you can take your kids to. I really wanted to work on a musical and have for some time about the holidays that makes fun of the holidays that you can have a drink and watch and it could even work perhaps in a cabaret space, um, you know, at, or second second stages throughout the country. So mm -hmm. um, I think that, um, I think it's, it's also, you know, this isn't a superficial piece it, it is funny uh it's funny and sad but i think that it does really dissect um some of the uh quirkier parts of the holidays for example and one of the songs um that billy masterfully composed is called mistletoe porn mistletoe porn is the name and it's about that fake sense of longing and romance and um you know uh the, the sort of um, feelings that we have for people that we might not normally have uh, standing under a mistletoe. And uh, all of the cast relates to this and their own loneliness. So, you know, it is a deep dive into all of that, but it, it does it in a very witty way. And mm -hmm. I think you definitely hear that in the score. Um, that is one of the songs that we are presenting tomorrow. Excellent, excellent. I give you guys a lot of credit. Uh, you knee jerk into Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's and this time of year, and say, okay, we just gotta be nice and happy and everything. And suddenly we, we just go for a tearjerker. We just suddenly go for the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Uh, to be honest, to be real, I think takes guts. And so I give you a lot of credit that now people can sit there and go, oh yeah, Christmas is great. Oh uh, yeah, that too. Oh, I remember <laughs> that well. So, so yours, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's the holiday classic. I'm gonna say it's a cathartic piece of work that, that people are gonna want to sit there and say, yep, that's exactly right. And, and you're right, that's an excellent choice. It's like the counterpoint. Okay, go see, go see the, the, the Christmas angel and then come here and see the Christmas reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so right. this at, is really cool. At 11 p.m. in the upstairs space, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And to do it in cabarets is perfect because you know if, if, if you're heading off to the cabaret around the holiday time, okay, you get it. You understand the reality of the world. So, so to have a drink and say, yep, yep, this is 2020 for you. Uh, now, there's a big question. When did you guys start uh, working on this? Oh, gosh, a couple years ago, actually. And uh, we've been working with several different drafts of it. Uh, the play, the, the book, uh, in, underwent a huge rewrite this summer uh, in the midst of quarantining and, and um, really just laser focused on, on adding a few characters and changing some plot points and moving it along. So it, it received a huge facelift this summer. So a lot of what we're presenting uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, there are new songs, group numbers that have been recently rewritten, uh, like in the last 90 days. So um, it's really exciting to see that they're working so well. 
Okay, then, then I, I ask both partners here. Uh, so for a year and a half, you're writing this great, you know, fun Christmas musical where, where, where we're shining a light on the reality of the holiday while still making you laugh. Mm -hmm. Then you get closed down. How did that change? What did that do for your piece uh, once COVID hit? Well, I think it sort of forced us to reckon with um, that isolation that now suddenly everybody was feeling and this feeling of being trapped. You know, this is a, a musical where, you know, it happens in real time for 90 minutes. It's these people who are literally trapped, you know, in their lives and in this, you know, terrible office Christmas party. Um, and, you know, it, it's sort of us literally going through that, um, that feeling of entrapment while we were writing this new draft allowed us to both tap into the tragedy and the comedy of that situation. Um, and, um, and now here we are in the holidays and we are still sort of trapped like that. And I think, um, I think it's really going to play um, in a, a really fresh and exciting way, um, you know, because it is sort of this new phenomenon that, that people are going through and I think it's going to resonate, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, uh... I, I have the expression, I always say, are you a genius by accident or on purpose? Uh, and, and this is really genius because you picked one of the things in Christmas where people feel, you know, they come together, but they still feel isolated. Something like a, a forced holiday Christmas party. Uh, and, and we're normally people who watch this and go, yeah, I hate those things or whatever. How many people are now going to watch this tomorrow night and say, I wish I could go to one of those parties? So you've created this really amazing dichotomy. It's like, okay, I don't wanna go, but I really wanna go. Uh, uh, these people kill me, but I really wanna be next to them again. It's like you really created like a, a, a real discussion point. Uh, Drew, to your point where, you, where you're saying the reality of this piece, people are gonna come away for this, not just going, oh yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah, Merry Christmas. They're gonna, they're gonna come away and say, yeah, that's right. And you're opening conversation, the, the whole works. This. <laughs> This well, has been lucky it, for you. <laughs> I think it really hits home too because uh, this year has been a year when many of us have, as Billy was saying, we feel stuck uh, physically, but also we've been evaluating our lives in the direction that they're going in. So I think some of the the deeper sort of um, the deeper themes of this uh, might resonate a bit more, uh, considering what we've all gone through this year. So I mean, we don't. None of us hopefully work at an adult incontinence pads company where we feel trapped, literally. But um, I think we have in different ways. So I think we have a window in. And I would also say that you know, yes, it is a send up of you know office holiday party culture. But by the end of it, it's a celebration of it too. You so, know, and and I think that is, is going to be something that people connect with as well. That, that's what I'm seeing. It's going to be like, oh, no, I hate. No, I don't. I miss it. It's a, you're really going to give us a, a, a stocking full of emotions, which is, which is really clever. And, and I, I'm just thinking, oh, but, but the musical itself, the whole musical won't happen until 2021. But like, we're going to forget this? Like, 20, like 2021 is going to come by and we're going to say, oh, I don't remember the plague. We're all going to, we're, we're still going to have scars from it. So, so if anything, you're going to become a galvanizing force next year. And people are going to watch this and say, you know, last year, and, and it's going to be that much stronger a, a holiday experience. Uh, you, you have a piece of it. I'm, I'm now dying to see it. You have a, 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 a quick teaser that you'd like to show. Please. We, 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 uh, you, know, you were talking earlier about, um, you were asking us how this altered the development this year, just being in yeah. COVID. We actually had a, an in-person uh, reading concert plans in like April and we were in the in the midst of planning it all and then of course it had to be canceled once everything really hit at the end of February March so you know after sulking for a few weeks Billy and I just decided hey we're going to throw out a couple of music videos we're going to get the same actors uh, who were looking for things to do uh, being at home and so that is what we're sharing with you um, today so we're, we've got um, we've got a, a wonderful number called the Santa for me and it's a um, it's a trio with three of the female characters. One of them is Paige Turner, who's a very accomplished drag performer throughout New York. Um, I think they call Paige her Turner. the show bit, Spitfire, right? Spitfire and, um, and some, some other amazing performers as well. So, um, so I would love to share that with you. It's, it's about a four minute video actually. Love it. Uh, I think it's one of the more uh, hummable numbers in this that'll, you know, it'll get stuck in your head, so. Good, good. Yeah. good. So I'm going to screen share and thank you. I, while while you're preparing this, I, I give you guys a lot of credit again because, and I was just saying this, 
uh, it's so easy to, to say, okay, there's the pandemic, I'm gonna sit and do nothing. No, you, you said, no, let's get up and still do our work. And that's, that's what a true artist needs to say. So I congratulate you on that. Lay it on me. The work goes on, that's great. Is my screen sharing? I see it completely. Great. I see the Here Santa for me. Santa for me. great that's great the audio was great the video seemed a little choppy from my screen doesn't mean it uh it uh 
records that way, but I that's can, okay. I can send this to you separately as a download for sound syncing reasons. And everything. You, you just saved me uh, five minutes of saying, why don't you send me it? Yeah. So I will, I will put it on my social media as well. Amazing. So if it is choppy to others, now they can see the thing. But to get a notion of a song, I got a little little shop of horrors in there. I got a little Rocky Horror in there. Mm -hmm. Great. That's, that's exactly what we need. That's exactly what we need. So, so give us the details. When, where, wh tomorrow night, we all have to put on our Santa hats and, and where are we going? What are we doing? Where are well, we going? This is, uh, being streamed with the New York Theater Barn uh, tomorrow evening, I believe at seven, seven o'clock. Okay. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. they are releasing through social media and their e-blast the YouTube link uh, tonight and tomorrow morning as to where we can go and access that. And uh, after that, we'll have a talk back with, um, with Billy and I and then Aaron Simon Gross, who was our director for this particular segment. So, Oh, that's great. So everyone can catch the 30-minute the piece and then they get to chat with you guys about uh, the creation of it. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Now, this is part of a whole series. I... I I recall seeing Theater Barnes, uh, the thing you sent me from Playbill, and there's several musicals in this, no? Yeah, they've been doing really amazing work throughout quarantine. And, and going back to what you're saying about artists, you know, just continuing the work, um, they really, you know, have sort of been at the forefront of that, you know, streaming new musicals from home. Um, this is sort of a new thing in their series, this whole sort of, um, you know, this, this full 30 minute presentation that we're doing. We're the first show to do that. But you know, since March, they have been sharing so many incredible concerts and live streams of, of things. And yeah, it's, so it's really inspiring to be working with them right now. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, so tomorrow night, uh, and you're saying the YouTube link will be, uh, will be posted tomorrow or tonight or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it'll be sent out tonight on their eBlast and then it'll be on their social media, I think tomorrow and they'll just keep promoting it. So um, it'll be please, on YouTube. Please tag me, please make sure my, my pages have it so I can spread it around. Uh, if the whole musical is like that song, then we're going to be snapping our fingers all over the place. <laughs> and and as she was singing with the knife in her hand, I good. <laughs> you know, that's well, we need we need more uh, uh, heroines like that for sure. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. With Lauren Loreno and Deb Redloff, who are joining Paige Turner in that yeah. number as well. So thank you. You you yeah. saved me another five minutes. I was going to ask you <laughs> who, who the very talented performers were. The harmonies were great. Uh, you could see they were having a blast. Uh, it's just going to be a great piece. And I'm, I'm we, we owe a lot to them and these actors that have, you know, volunteered their time with us throughout the year, uh, making these videos. You know, it's not easy as an actor to sing into a headset by yourself in the corner of your room and act enthusiastic about Christmas. And, you know, I can't imagine. So we've, we've been very lucky to have some amazing actors that have helped us develop it this year digitally. And it only makes us more excited for, you know, what that is going to feel like when we're able to do it in a real theater next year. I, I've, I've spoken to many indie filmmakers who've tried to do movies in pandemic. Mm. <clears throat> and one thing which they've all said, and one of them, I spoke to several of their actors and they elaborated on it, that the actors become filmmakers because you have to mm. tell them, okay, position your camera, fix the lighting, okay, lean over, okay, move like this. So, so an actor becomes a cinematographer mm. from all this. Um, uh, and a, a stage director suddenly becomes a film director in seconds. <clears throat> I'm... I'm this is a horrible situation we're in and I, I take none of that away. But the fact that we are all learning so much just to keep one art alive, we're learning two, three, mm -hmm. four, 10 others, mm -hmm. I think is really brilliant. <clears throat> um, I was laughing, that's why it's, 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 <laughs> it's, giving, me, it's giving me a sore throat. Um, guys, I'm so happy to speak to you. Thank you so much for this January. In January, what happens in January with this? Well, we've got a few more songs to, to work on because this new draft is so new, but uh, you know, we're looking forward to doing an in-person concert reading uh, as soon as we can. So. And, and where do you have an idea where you want it to go after that? I know the idea of the second stage and everything like that. Is, is there a particular company, a particular uh, focus you're having in terms of it? Um, you know, we would love a really exciting, healthy run off Broadway uh, every holiday season. So in the end, you're looking for uh, investors or possibly the producer of a theatrical company who's looking to have something really fascinating and yet undone for their holiday season, which will probably be amazing next year because it will have to uh, make up for this year. So they're looking for innovative and charming musicals written by clever and witty people, uh, one of which who's raunchy. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
so so uh, if there's any help I can give, please let me know. Send me information. Keep me posted on all of this. Thanks, Love Jay. to hear more. Love That's to hear more. Subtle. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, you took the words right out of our mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Subtlety is something no one has ever bestowed upon me ever. Uh, but I'm not being subtle when I say thank you so much. This was great. This was a pick me up that we all needed, and I'm really excited for you. And I want this to be an absolute blast. And and tag me, throw everything onto my Facebook. And I'll be glad to spread the word about it. Great, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you much for having us. Through Billy, my pleasure. Thank you. And ho, ho, ho. Here's, here's, to, uh, here's to the bestest Christmas party ever, uh, being the bestest Christmas show ever. <laughs> thank you, guys. Ciao.